Hey guys, welcome back. I'm pretty excited because my Overland Models SD70M flared radiators are in. I've got two of those locomotives that came in today from brasstrains.com. We'll go into that in a minute. Before we do, I want to talk to you guys about viewer mail. I get tons of questions and a lot of them are on the same topic, so I try to cover those in videos, so I'm going to do that. If you send me a message and I haven't responded, I'm sorry. I miss messages here and there, but another problem may be that you haven't added me as a contact on YouTube because sometimes I try to reply to a message and I get this thing saying that I haven't been added as a contact so somebody will reply or send me a message I try to reply and I can't and then they get angry. Why aren't you replying to me? Are you ignoring me? And I'm sitting here trying to reply but I can't because I'm not added as a contact. So if you see repetitive messages where you're not getting a response from me that might be the issue. Uh, also sometimes I'm just busy or I miss messages but I really try to get to every one of your guys' concerns. Now, some of those concerns that were listed in some of the recent messages, one viewer asked me, why do I collect so many locomotives in rolling stock and I don't run them on my layout and when my layout's not that big? Well, my layout's not huge. It's a lot bigger than sometimes it looks on video. It's 6 feet wide by 22 feet long. Those are the dimensions. The track runs almost all the way to the outer edge. I've given some space for roll, uh, rolling stock and locomotives to fall over, but it's a fairly good sized layout. It's definitely not a 4x8. Uh, however, as you guys know, I'm military, so I move around a lot. <clears throat> so one day when I retire from the military, uh, I will build a larger layout, or at least that's the plan, on a house that you know has a larger uh, basement and things like that. But as long as I'm in the military, I will move around too frequently to spend too much time. That's why you don't see a lot of detailed scenes and things like that on my layout. I really didn't even want to do the roundhouse and turntable because eventually this is going to have to come down. And my, t my clock is ticking. I've already been in Omaha two years and my average for an Air Force base is about two to three years, uh, sometimes four. So, you know, when will that clock tick and I'll have to go somewhere else? I don't know. It depends on promotion. It depends on assignment availability. It depends on if I get a wild hair and want to move. So with all that said, yeah, the layout's going to stay, stay this size. There's probably not going to be any details added because, like I said, the more details I put into it, the more I'm going to tear it down. But I will continue to collect rolling stock locomotives. I'll continue to run them. I rotate them so they run. They, I know everybody thinks I'm just a collector that hoards everything, but... I run these locomotives and I run these rolling stock pieces and I switch them out pretty often. Uh, but like I said, the plan is to have this stuff ready for a much larger layout to where all this stuff will be on the layout and it will still be dwarfed. So that's the plan one day and I'm trying to find different ways to uh, do that. And Right now that's collecting and acquiring rolling stock and locomotives. Another question I get asked is uh, why or what do I use for rolling stock and locomotives that become uncoupled often? You know, a lot of people say they have flat layouts like mine, but still things come uncoupled because of leveling issues. Well, there's a couple different ways. One way is to put these little washers in there, but I don't like messing with that because I've got jittery hands and moving it around, getting them in there is a little hard. So I go an easier way. These are KD number 118 and 119 shelf couplers. Uh, now, they're pretty nice couplers and they're wide, so they allow for that level difference when in different parts of your layout or when things aren't lining up right. But what they do is <clears throat> you install them in place of your old coupler and they will not come disconnected. Now, if you have a huge leveling problem, it can cause derailments, but I use these because it's an easy fix. Now, for the prototype modelers, I'm telling you right now that... Uh, <laughs> The, the railroads use shelf couplers in real life, but they use them usually for passenger trains or hazardous cargo trains to give that extra security to make sure nothing comes uncoupled, even though it really doesn't hardly ever in the real world. But anyway, so if you're a prototype modeler, you might want to stick to passenger cars and hazard material uh, cars like tank cars and things like that. But anyway, that's a good fix for that. So... Uh, one other thing going on here is I'll be starting a new series on my channel. You guys will see videos uh, geared towards that series, kind of like I did How to Build a Layout from Start to Finish. I will be doing another series. I haven't announced it yet, um, but I will just interject videos occasionally. So you'll see a video that's basically geared towards 
uh, people starting out in the hobby, kind of like the how to build a layout was. All right, well with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at these Overland models, SD70Ms. I was really excited to get them, but when I got them, I ran into a couple problems, and we'll talk about that a little closer on the layout. But here, these models were produced uh, almost, let's see, around 2002, when they had the green boxes on uh, Overland models, but because these units, uh, was I think some of the first with the flag scheme, uh, they made these special boxes Overland Models did. Another quick rumor I want to put to rest is uh, I talked to uh, Brian Marsh at Overland Models about this. A lot of people think that Overland Models has some exclusive on the SD70M flared radiator because no plastic manufacturer has produced it. That's not the case. Uh, just no plastic manufacturer has produced it yet. I was hoping for Atherin to do that uh, this time around, uh, but when they announced the GP50 I decided I was going to go ahead and purchased two brass SD70M flared radiators if I could find them and I happen to find them at uh, BrassTrains.com which is a, a pretty good site. They got these here. Uh, there are some issues with the locomotives. Like I said I'm always up front with you guys so I will tell you one of the locomotives has a broken uh, post but it's an easy fix so I'm going to let it slide and then another issue I had I'll show you up close but the front truck would not rotate freely enough to navigate my turns which are pretty big turns and come to find out somebody had installed the fuel tank too close to the front truck so it was hitting the fuel tank well with that, all that said let's take a closer look at these uh, SD70M's flared radiators I really wanted flared radiators uh, represented on my layout because they, uh, they're something that's not made in plastic uh, the, if you want to kit bash, you can, but a lot of the details aren't captured in kit bashing. You know, they've got these kits where you can replace the cab and the flared radiator section, and you can chop up an SD70M from Atherin. So you're spending $130 on the SD70M, another $30 or so on the kit, and then all you have is the cab and the flared radiator. But as one YouTuber talked to me frequently, has talked to me frequently about there are more details than just the cab and the flared radiator. There's all these little details that make the SD70M flared radiator different from regular SD70Ms. So those folks that are just swapping out those two parts and repainting things, they've got more of a fantasy scheme thing than an actual flared radiator. So I decided to go with Overland on these. And, and also, I'm not even going to try to pretend. I do not have the skills to cut into a $130 SD70M, which I have some. Uh, but I'm not going to cut into them and start working just to see what I can do. I'm not going to waste that money, uh, especially if they don't turn out good. There is one guy, like I said, the guy that I've been talking to about this who does a real great job with them, but I'm not that guy. I'm not that good. I'm not that artistic. All right, let's take a closer look at these SD70Ms here on the layout. All right, well, up close and personal, you have the SD70M flared radiator from Overland Models. A couple quick notes, these units do have DCC already installed, no sound. They're lens decoders. I really don't like these decoders. I don't know if it's because they're lens or because of what tweaks were done, but you really got to crank up uh, the DCC controller to get these things going. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's momentum programmed in or what, but I'll play with it and try to get it better. Also, the lights are really dim, so sounds like a job for Lagar Technologies down in San Antonio. I'll probably be sending these off to them once they uh, get settled down a bit and I will get these installed with DCC and sound and have them fix the lighting because it is really really uh, dim on some of these I can't remember which one anyway another thing you might notice right off the bat is white rooftops on these there's a reason for that back in 2000 early 2000 when these were delivered that's how they were delivered and overland models accurately switched these over to the model from the prototype and added the white roof because that's how they were. Now if you go to relpictures.net these days with these two cab numbers they now have gray roofs so at some point they've been repainted. Will I repaint them? No because I kind of like it. I think it looks kind of cool and it's part of the reason I bought it to be honest. I bought these two. Like I said I wanted flared radiators but uh, SD70Ms with flared radiators but the white roofs kind of set it off. Uh, tinted windows, real nice detail there. So the flag and everything is a real nice crisp print. 
One thing you will notice about SD70M flared radiators if you're a good dedicated rail fan is that there's all these little different variations. Like one of the variations are four section radiators instead of two section radiators. Uh, they've just got different cab shapes depending on when they were made. Uh, different antenna configurations, things like that. So these were accurate at the time. Like I said, they've been slightly modified. I'm fine with that. I want flared radiators. I got them. With that said, take a little look around this model a little closer and I'll show you how to fix some of the problems I had with it. Okay, so one of the issues I had was this front truck would not rotate freely. It's way better now and the reason was the reason it wouldn't was because it was hitting the fuel tank right here. The reason it was hitting the fuel tank was uh, the fuel tank was positioned wrong. So I took out the screws. When you, when you take apart an Overland model's locomotive there's two screws up top, two screws at the bottom. You've obviously got to remove the couplers but then there's two screws on each side of the fuel tank. Probably not being able to pick any of this up right now because it's kind of dark but and they're hidden under the trucks some of the screws but it's really simple and there's a lot of room in these overland models this is actually the first overland models locomotive I took it apart that I've taken apart and I gotta thank Tim one of my buddies uh, YouTube a fan of mine and just a friend uh, for helping me through this he's got tons of overland models locomotives he'd blow my blow my layout and blow my inventory out of the water any day so anyway, when you take that apart, you can reposition the fuel tank and then I'll free up the front truck to operate freely to navigate my turns. And that was the problem I had. Another problem I had was, like I said, uh, there's a broken handrail on the front, uh, actual handrail post, and I'll be able to fix that with just a tiny bit of glue. But other than that, these models are excellent. And really, that's not anything from Overland, it's just... Either shipping or time has done that to these locomotives, these problems with these locomotives. Just great detail overall. They're just really nice units. You can see the truck detail. And you can see uh, the fuel tank detail. And like I said, the cab, tinted windows, things like that in the cab. Just a real nice job Overland Models does on these locomotives and pretty much every locomotive I've ever had from them. They're really accurate, they do great great work. And they should for the price, I mean you're buying brass, it's supposed to be primo, and it is. So with that said, I will leave you guys with the uh, with a run by of these. Remember no sound, so don't get too excited. But Lagar Technologies will take care of that here in probably a couple months once I let them catch up on their work and uh, the turnaround times aren't too bad. One more look at these boxes, real nice, real nice boxes, um, especially considering this was when the green boxes were around and they did this special uh, for these boxes, so good job there. Lens decoder, I'll have to report back to you guys on if I can tweak it and make it better. Alright guys, we'll see you next time, I'll leave you with a run by, thanks for watching.